Yo, what's going on YouTube? So this is a very, very exciting video. I'm going to be bringing you my first ever PC build. It's been a long time coming. The old PC I've been using since 2013 and it was a pre-built. Eventually upgraded it in 2017 and now it's 2020 and it's time for something better. I was using, I used to be using an AM3 CPU socket with DDR3 RAM and that, that was just, that was bad. We had to step it up. So now, as you can see on the screen, we got a Ryzen 7 processor. That's an AM4 Plus socket. So we're stepping it up. We got DDR4 RAM now and it's pretty exciting. I'm currently recording this commentary on the new PC and it's really great. I'm very happy with how it turned out for my first ever PC build and I didn't really have too much trouble either while I was do uh, while I was making it which is pretty cool. I thought I would have a lot more issues when I was doing this but luckily that was not the case. Hey, <laughs> case, PC case. But it's very cool. So we got the Ryzen 7 3700X 8 core processor with 16 threads. Really awesome, as you can see, it comes with the Wraith cooler that has some nice LED lights on it. Very exciting stuff. I, I went with this processor because I wanted to be able to play my games and either record them or stream them at the same time. My last PC was not capable of playing a PC game and streaming it at, at the same time. It was either one or the other, which was kind of unfortunate. So I made sure I did my research. And we're pairing it with the B450 Tomahawk Max. This motherboard is great. It is a perfect budget. I wouldn't even say budget. It's like a mid-range motherboard. And it's Ryzen 3000 ready. So it doesn't need any BIOS updates. You just put the CPU in it. And right out of the box. And it should work just fine. Which, spoiler alert, it did. So that was very exciting. It's got some LED lights on the back end of it, which you will see later on in the video when the PC is completely built. And it's got a lot of slots, four memory slots. It's got a couple RGB uh, strips, uh, slots on the motherboard for RGB lighting and control. A good amount of CPU fan slots or ports, whatever you call them. And it's very nice. It has nice build quality. It's an ATX size motherboard, so it's about the normal size. And it fit just fine in my case. We'll see the case later on in the video. But I'm going to talk about it now. It's the Obsidian 750D. A very large case indeed. But I chose this one because I still wanted to have an optical drive in my build. Just because, you know, I felt like it was a step back not having one. Whether I was going to use it a lot or not. So this case seemed to be the best option. It didn't look ugly but still had 5 and a quarter inch uh, drive bays in the front. And the case also had a lot of room and a lot of space for storage. So right now you could see I'm investigating the board, getting a good look at it. And I'm giving it a nice comparison with my old motherboard. It was a micro ATX. And yeah, it was a lot smaller. But my old PC was a pre-built. I didn't choose any of the components. It's just what came with the PC. And you could see the old motherboard. I had a Wraith cooler on it. Because I had an AMD FX 8370 processor that also had one of those same coolers except that one didn't have an LED on the fan well, that's alright I wasn't really too concerned with cosmetics and I still am, am not really concerned with it but anyway here we go with the CPU installation clearly you just gotta lift up that latch and come in with your processor the Ryzen just looks really clean and it's really satisfying to look at especially all the pins on the other end it's very delicate looking and it's kind of feels like you have the power right in your own hands which you'll see in a second i give a nice view of the pins but you should already know what they look like if you're familiar with what ryzen looks like it's very exciting i've installed cpus before i upgraded my old one in my pre-build from an 83 uh no it was a f amd fx 4300 to an 8370 so right here i'm trying to install it well, beforehand I was trying to install it with my left hand so you could see it, but I was having difficulty so I just used my right hand and it looked way better. Or well, it was way easier to like control it that way. So that's how we did it. Now we're going over the RAM. 
I got a good decent amount of RAM. It's 16 gigabytes, two eight gigabyte sticks, 3600 speed, and it's pretty awesome. Very good for streaming and anything of the sort. Um, I have to overclock them, turns out, to get close to the 3600 speed, but that's no big deal. But yeah, the RAM was a very simple install. Made the motherboard look cool with a nice red color. And the aesthetic of the board is kind of a neutral, so the red really does make it look good. But it was very exciting. So the parts, I ordered them all about on April 7th. 7th and 8th and 9th within those three days was when I decided which parts I wanted and which ones to purchase. I think the first one I ended up buying actually might have been the case. Yeah, it was the case. I ordered it on a Wednesday and it actually came in the next day, which was quite surprising. I didn't get next day shipping or anything like that. And then I ended up ordering the processor because I saw a nice price online. And I didn't really want to wait just in case it went back up. And then next I bought the graphics card, which I'll talk about later on, like what kind of card it was. But I got a really good deal on it because it was refurbished. It wasn't new, but that doesn't matter because it was still great and it runs perfectly fine. But as you can see right now, I'm trying to install the CPU fan and I was kind of having problems with it. I was just not as much room as I would have thought and I just couldn't really get the, the hooks on the side to attach to the little grips on the board. But eventually I kind of just started using my brain and I got it to work. Luckily the thermal paste that was already pre-applied to the bottom of the heat sink was unfazed. Because I, I messed it up or like I was messing around with the cooler and I ended up taking it off and I checked and it was fine. Luckily I finally got it attached which was a nice relief because I was struggling for a little bit. As you can see I had to speed the footage up a little bit just so it wouldn't be too long. Now this part, I'm not going to speed up because I thought it was kind of funny. I've never installed an IO shield before. Like I said previously, my old PC was pre-built, so I didn't have to do any of that stuff. But I knew all you had to really do was just take the IO shield and kind of jam it into the back slot. But for whatever reason, it just would not click and stay in. And I was a little too afraid, I, I suppose is a word to use that I would bend it because I know it, all it is is a piece of metal and it could bend and I didn't want to bend the IO shield. So I didn't want to push too hard but I didn't think I was pushing hard enough so it wouldn't stay into the slot. And it's funny I thought I was doing it wrong for a second because I was pushing it in from the back to get it into place but I thought maybe if I went in from the outside in which you'll see in a second but I immediately knew that wasn't right. So I went back to pushing from the inside. And luckily it finally clicked, here it is right here. I take it out and try, and it's like, all right, yep, that's not it. So we get back in, the little fan cable gets in the way. And luckily eventually, after a few clicks, it does finally go into place. So that's exciting. Getting a little nervous there. One of the easiest steps in the whole build, and now it's probably the most frustrating, which I just thought was funny. That's why I didn't speed up the footage. I wanted you to see just how long it took me to actually get the IO shield in. If you had any, uh, if you've ever built a PC and you had difficulties with the IO shield, definitely let me know in the comments because that'd be funny to hear about. For, for whatever reason, I feel like I'm such a noob that only I would have an issue with the IO shield, but I digress. So here we go, getting the motherboard into, the, into place. It's got a little standoff or whatever you'd call it that you can use to align the board right where it's supposed to be without it sliding and dragging around so that was pretty easy and then it just took a couple screws I think I used eight screws so more than a couple I used eight screws that came with the case to screw the board securely into place pretty cool not hard at all very exciting stuff so I might want to add or I should add the footage you're watching now this was recorded on a Wednesday when at this point in my PC build I had the processor, the RAM, and the, uh, what was it, the processor, the RAM, and the motherboard, that's what it was. So I had those three components which was enough to set up and I could just reuse my old storage and my old graphics card temporarily while I waited for those other two things to show up. So the next cut is going to show the SSD, which is great right here. Boom. 
but this was a few days later so now we've moved to a different location and I just had to, the PC was already put together I just had to take out the old mechanical hard drive from my old PC that I put into the new one temporarily and then just put this in it so I don't actually show myself put the hard drive or the SSD into the and onto the motherboard but that's no big deal it doesn't really matter just gonna show off the component in the hardware because it's very impressive how SSDs are the size of a stick of gum I was pretty shocked with how small it actually was in person and then actually the day of recording this the 18th well, it's the 19th now it's after midnight but on the 18th of Saturday was when the graphics card came in which is gonna be the next piece of footage coming up and that was the last component all I had to do was take out my old 1050 Ti and throw in this MSI RTX 2070 8GB refurbished. Now this card when it first came out was about $600 and I paid less than $400 for it because it was refurbished. So that was pretty awesome and it's very nice. It didn't look used at all. It looked basically brand new. It just didn't come in the original packaging. So here we go. Ignore the dirty laundry in the back. And there's the initial boot up with everything inside of it. Like I said, I already turned it on with the hard drive and the old GPU. But this is the first initial boot up with everything brand new in it. And you see how quick it is and how fast that NVMe SSD is. How quickly it loads into Windows. It's basically not even 25 seconds and you're already loaded in. Now I'm very happy with how this build came out. Uh, the cable management was a little difficult. I might have to go back and try to adjust that a little more. But the case that I purchased really does do a good job with that. So now we're going to switch to some Warzone gameplay. I'm not going to continue the commentary from this point. I just wanted to let you see the capabilities of this build. And how uh, Warzone runs on max settings with the highest FOV. And spoiler alert, it runs pretty great. So thanks for watching. This is my first PC build. If you have any comments, definitely throw them down. Leave a rating, thumbs up or thumbs down. And uh, I'm very excited that I built my own first PC. And I hope it's not the last one I ever build. But I built this PC to try to future-proof it so I can use it for at least the next five years. And I think I achieved that with all the components I put in. I'll leave a list of the specs in the description if you're curious. And yeah, thanks for watching. This is X Chopper, and expect more content with a new rig. Peace. Battle Royale. Got gas closing in fast. Get to the safe zone. Moving. <clears throat> Targets are up. Get to work.
line. You lose, your fight is over. Earn your way out. Shot of no mercy. Stand by for redeployment. Gas is moving in. New safe zone located. Enemy UAV overhead. Supply cache located. Move to secure.
Got gas inbound. Safe zone relocated. Enemy UAV overhead. Next objective located. UAV overhead. Gas is moving in. New safe zone located. Less than 10 were still standing. You fought hard out there. Return to me. 